Hey guys, Marissa at KitchenTableStamper.com. You're joining us in video number one of three in the Horse and Sleigh stamp -a stack series. Now this stamp -a stack is a little bit different. As usual, we have class packets available while supplies last. So the class is free on the blog. This is our first card in the series. In video number two, we'll share this joyful card. And in video number three, we'll share wishing you a season of cheer. The class packet has the materials that you need to make two each of three designs. We're gonna start with this design today. It includes a half a pack of festive pearls, the linen thread that you need. The class packet includes all of the cardstock that you need to do your stamping and die cutting with the featured bundle. We don't do any stamping or die cutting with the horse and sleigh bundle. Now you can use this class packet uh, with any Christmas or winter bundle that you have, but I'm using the new horse and sleigh. This is an online exclusive from Stampin' Up. It also includes a quarter of a package of the new one horse open sleigh. This paper is amazing. You can just drop the horse and sleigh right into the scenes, or you can use the little scenes by themselves. This card really features on using the scene as the focal from the paper. The B sides of this paper are gorgeous also. Look at that wood grain and then the crumb cake. Here's two more excellent scenes that you can drop any image in. We're gonna use the horse and sleigh, but think about the things you have in your collection that would look good in those scenery. And then look at these B-side designer series papers. This is a great masculine papers too. Look at the little deer, that's my favorite. So you'll get one each of the designs in your class packet as a sample pack. And the horse and sleigh bundle and the one horse open sleigh designer series papers are online exclusives from Stampin' Up. You'll find the link to those in the description below. All right, so that's the paper you get a quarter package of. And then in your card kits, you'll find that we did a lot of the uh, basic uh, die cutting and punching for you. You'll see you have the cardstock pieces that you need. All right, we're going to do this old olive one. So let's grab our card bases. Your card bases are in Stampin' Up! envelopes and they are scored for you. For the sake of the video, I'm going to assemble one of each of the cards. The kit makes two. All right, so your kit contains your pieces. Let me show you what's in there. Envelope eight, my crumb cake. I'm going to put my envelope aside. We've got eight and a half by five and a half, scored at four and a quarter, old olive card base. Now, for the little something different part of this stamp -a stack If you are familiar with the kitchen table stamper stamp -a stack you are familiar with our wonder recipe type stamp -a stack um, We have done sketch stamp -a stacks in the past, but it was before sketches were released. So this is based on our shortcut card sketches. Let me show you. Here's our shortcut card sketches. There are currently six sketches that are public in um, the Kitchen Table Stamper blog. If you like this Shortcut Card Sketches binder, we are keeping our Summer Sketch Series and Sampler offer open until July 20th, 2023. You could get this binder. You can click the link below for more information about our Shortcut Card Sketches and the Summer Sketch Series. All right, so this is a Shortcut Card Sketch number one. If you are following, we just wrapped up our summer sketch series on Friday. And so I thought we would keep the fun going with this stamp -a stack There's our shortcut card sketch and here is our A layer, which is our old olive cardstock, eight and a half by five and a half scored at four and a quarter. Layers B through E can be cardstock or designer series paper. So we have layer B here for you. It's Lost Lagoon. It's five by two and a quarter. And then we have already cut ahead of time 
D, which is three and three quarters by three quarters. And this is one of those amazing B sides from the One Horse Open Sleigh designer series paper. You can see this is starting to come to life, right? Now, let's focus on C for just a minute here. We've got B, we've got uh, D, but C is three and three quarters by two and a quarter. And our sample is going to use this adorable cabin paper. And this is probably my favorite scene in the One Horse Open Sleigh. So I wanted to really maximize it, right? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna cut this so that it's double wide. So two and a quarter plus two and a quarter is four and a half. And what we wanna do is center that four and a half on the cabins and then we're going to cut it in half. Let me show you what I did so you can uh, achieve the same results. So we want our paper to be three and three quarters tall. Let's start with that. We're going to cut down our six inch designer series paper to three and three quarters. And what I did with this was pretty simple. I just took maybe three quarters of an inch off of the top maybe five eighths of an inch off the top. And then I flipped my paper and cut this down to our three and three quarter inch measurement. So there's three and three quarters. And we're going to cut. Now we want to center our cabins within the four and a half inches. So we've got six inches. We want to cut this down to four and a half. So if we take three quarters of an inch from each side of the paper and then rotate three quarters of an inch, then we have our four and a half inch paper. Now what we're going to do is cut two and a quarter and it'll go right down in between the two cabins. And we have the best part of our paper preserved to be the focal image on each of the two copies of the card that the kit makes. All right, we're gonna make one, so let's put this guy aside for just a minute and hold on to your scraps. Look at this gorgeous pattern. We're gonna use this in our next video. All right, so we've got, let's recap. A is our card base. B is our Lost Lagoon, five by two and a quarter. We've just made our layer C, three and three quarters by two and a quarter. And we're really highlighting the best part of my favorite pattern. Don't forget our other little guy. Now we've got our level D, three and three quarters by three quarters and our level E, we're going to, I say about myself, crafty girls do what they want. So this is four by three quarters instead of four by one half. We need to make a little bit wider to accommodate our greeting. So that's what we're gonna do. All right, let's get stamping. I'm gonna start with our background and it's going to be the same throughout the entire series. We're gonna use this amazing sketched plaid background stamp and we're going to stamp the backgrounds with Versamark ink. My suggestion to you is to do all of your backgrounds for all six cards at one time. So we're still going to work these in batches like we do with our Wonder Recipe stamp -a stacks and there are going to still be these repeat features that you can do in batch working. You can do all your backgrounds at one time. You can stamp all of your sentiments at one time. Stamp all of your trees and color them at one time. All right, so keep that in mind just because we're not using the wonder recipes, we're using the shortcut card sketches instead, doesn't mean that um, that batch working that we do when we're doing stamp -a stacks um, doesn't apply. All right, I like to ink my stamp face up, then drop my card base on the stamp. You're gonna have to be a little bit careful here because you have a strong horizontal vertical pattern and you don't want it to run uphill or down, so just very carefully place. I love this method because you can see that you got it right. 
then cover so that you don't get Versamark all over your fingertips from the edges of the stamp and then just burnish down and you're going to take your time and apply the background to your card base make sure to get the center all right now let's reveal look at that gorgeous subtle plaid now you can hit this with a heat tool and set that ink it'll help it dry I'm gonna set it aside for now and we're going to do our stamping I've got my class packet it has three sheets of or three half sheets of basic white cardstock and we're going to stamp using memento tuxedo black for our images and we're going to use early espresso for our greeting got a photopolymer stamp set here the new horse and sleigh bundle is photopolymer stamps so we want to use our stamp and pierce mat and we're going to stamp our images two of each remember you're doing two of each card if you've got the class packet and if you're doing the entire stack then stamp all the trees that you need for all the cards And we need two bunnies. I love this rabbit. It's just such a cute little wingman image. We had to add him since we're featuring so strong on the designer series paper. This is a fun little image to use to accent. All right, let's get our crumb cake. Now we've got a four inch by three quarter inch banner here and we want to stamp to the right end of it because our bunny is going to overlap the banner we don't want to cover our greeting now set that aside and give it a second to dry let's color our images so we don't smudge our greeting we'll come back and add that fun chicken lip accent in just a minute my tree is Lost Lagoon and Pecan Pie. And my bunny is light gray granite and a little bit of pebbled path. So those are our Stampin' Blends. I'm gonna start with my Pecan Pie for the tree trunk. And I'm just going to fill in using some small like oval strokes Give a solid fill of light pecan pie. Then where the artist drew the shadows on the left side of the tree, I'm just going to bring a line of dark pecan pie down the edge of our trunk. And then in this small little space, you don't need much, but you can go back with just a little bit of light. And I'm doing kind of dashes like a flicking dash along the edge there's our tree trunk now my bunny bunny's gonna get a coat of light gray granite but not covered entirely we're gonna kind of leave some highlights on bunny's back and then on bunny's face toward the front at the eyes and then after we've got that, we're gonna scribble in. Not a completely full coat. Then we're gonna take our pebbled path, light and dark, and we're going to add a little bit of shadow. And as we add the shadow, we're doing it in kind of dots and dashes. We're going a little bit heavier on the shadow, like on the back leg, the one that's behind. And then we're gonna take our dark and do the same thing, but even less of the dark pebbled path. Go back to the light for just a little bit. And then finally, we're gonna go back to gray granite. And we're gonna just dab the edges of the pebbled path together with the gray granite. And that is your bunny. 
in now for our tree. I'm going to use the brush end of the Lost Lagoon. I hardly ever use the brush end, but you'll see here that this is going to make kind of a fun needle. We're going to just dab with the light using the brush end and leave some space there where you'll be able to see through the needles. Just keep dabbing. There we go, all the way down. Okay, now we're gonna take the dark. We're gonna do the same thing, but we're gonna keep it a little bit closer to the trunk. We're not going all the way out to the ends and at the trunk. And then once you've done in towards the trunk, you can do a little bit, just a dot, tiny dots, kind of out to the ends of the branches. And then anywhere that it looks a little sparse, you can do some more. All right. I think that that looks pretty good. And do all your images at once. Let's get the Stampin' Cut and Emboss Machine and let's cut these out. We're using the horse and sleigh dies to cut out our tree and our bunny. We're also going to cut our little snowdrift. Oh, my cool? I love the snowdrifts and the bare trees for. Um, for our sleigh, our bunny, even our gorgeous fir tree. All right, so you'll have plenty of cardstock for these. Grab an end and drop your snowdrift and then your elements. Let's get these cut out. We'll give it a crank. I love this little texture that it embosses on there on the snowdrift. Isn't that cool? And then our pieces. And let's bring our card back in. If you're looking for an easy way to do chicken lips and you don't have the Taylor Tag Punch, you can use Stampin' Up's Banner Pick a Punch. So there is a current um, item to do these little banner ends. I love my retired Taylor Tag Punch. So if you have that, um, note how nicely this makes chicken lips. All right, so we're gonna cut our banner down a bit, maybe a bit more. There we go, I think that looks pretty good. And let's get some liquid adhesive. All right, we still have one more step here. I added a little bit of texture to this Lost Lagoon piece. So we've got designer series paper, we've got our stamped background. I thought how nice and cozy would the wood grain texture look on our Lost Lagoon. It's a very subtle effect here. We don't do embossing for you. We'd have to emboss hundreds and we just can't do that. So we're gonna leave you the piece and be creative. You don't have the 3D. If you have the Timber 3D embossing folder, uh, there's you can substitute stamping in the background or any folder that you have. If you just gotta have the 3D Timber 3D embossing folder, you can buzz over to marissaalvarez.stampinup.net and click shop. You can get your Stampin' Up products shop 24 seven. All right, let's add a little texture to this. I love it, it fits our in the woods theme. It's cozy and natural, but it's not too intrusive. It adds something instead of distracting with the other patterns we have going on. The beautiful plaid and this gorgeous cross hatch. All right, let's get some liquid glue. Let me show you something else about this. We're only gonna put together one for the sake of the video, but I want you to see this. We did shortcut card sketch number one, but we mirrored it. All right, 
for the bigger cabin, because the cabin was on the right of the designer series paper, we used shortcut card sketch number one and did the exact layout for this one where the cabin is on the left side of the designer series paper. So these card sketches are to help you jump in with confidence, to get you crafting. They're not rigid, and that is the nice thing about them. Now you can still get our binder offer uh, if you would like to get involved with the paper sampler and the shortcut card sketch, summer sketch series with the binder. You can email marissa at kitchentablestamper.com and get the links to register for that. We are closing registration for the Shortcut Card Sketch Binder, the Summer Sketch Series, on July 20th, 2023. But never fear, we will keep on providing awesome inspiration, printable PDFs of our sketches, and new sketches with the release of the holiday Stampin' Up! Holiday catalog. So there will be lots more fun with these sketches. All right, we're gonna put our designer series paper and then we're gonna put our strip of designer series paper. Love, love, love all the textures and patterns, how they're coming together. Now we're going to add our sentiment. Keep in mind how I showed you that we stamped to the right for the bunny's head. When you do your mirror image card, you'll stamp to the left so that the bunny doesn't cover your sentiment. And let's not forget our tree. I'm gonna have to slide that little guy right underneath. Little liquid glue. I love this image. My goodness, such a pretty, pretty image. All right, then our snowdrift. And our little bunny deserves the spotlight. Let's get some dimensionals here. I got a little half waiting for bunny. We'll pop that right in the snow drift. So cute. I love that bunny. Isn't that cute? I mean, the horse and sleigh is definitely the star of the show. But that bunny and that tree are amazing images, don't you think? All right, our last step is going to be to embellish. And we are using the festive pearls. And you get a half a pack of these festive pearls in your optional class packet. You can check out and see if those are available while supplies last at kitchentablestamper.com shop. When you get there on the right hand menu, if you're on a laptop or desktop or in the bottom, scroll down to the bottom, you'll be able to find a product filter. Filter the product for class packets and you'll be able to see any of the class packets that we have available. Now we've got gorgeous colors on these pearls and my original samples have the um, gorgeous red pearls, perfect with the One Horse Open Sleigh designer series paper. I'm gonna try the gold on this set of cards. Oh, I just love the way that just brings some warmth to the project. Three for each of the, or I did six for each of the cards. You're gonna have plenty of pearls left over, even with six on each card. All right, you guys, there is the first card in our brand new Stampa stack. We're keeping the good times rolling from the summer sketch series and offering the brand new horse and slice Stampa stack packets while supplies last. Kitchentablestamper.com slash shop to see if we have packets for this class. And if you'd like to get in on our last round of the sampler and sketch series get your binder email marissa at kitchentablestamper.com for the links and details all right you guys i hope that you're enjoying the series i will see you in video number two where we'll make this joyful card this 
is a Kitchen Table Stamper Shortcut Card Sketch number six. All right, guys, I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.